one thing that I've always enjoyed about uh, being in the presence of the the bhaktis and the, and the bhaktas, you know, is that rarely you find so egotism. You see, in the state of surrender and uh, devotion, you don't see so much egotism. Egotism is so surrendered and humility, and it's so touching, so deep, so profound. You see, more arrogance is found and pride amongst the the jnanis. You see, the, because more of this is more the more the sort of psychological, intellectual type more. And so there's more feeling. Well, you know, yes, I am it. You know, hey. <laughs> you see, they are comparing. You know, I'm silent. You know, I'm more silent than you. <laughs> this type of thing. So you're much more room for egotism. So something balances out. I spoke just recently. I had the good fortune to speak with some of the people from Sri Nanagaru Sashram, because we were there for a while. We had a silent retreat there. And we had a whole full staff working in service also to uh, silent retreat, and then they slowly started to merge with us a bit. They were enjoying the silence of this, and they continued after the retreat was finished. Some were visiting the house, and I found that they were so. It was such joy. They would come as a group, and come in the evenings, come sit down, and they were so. They were not used to asking questions so freely. I had to sort of like pull it out of them. Say, do you not, Amma? Don't you want to ask a question? And she, mm-hmm. <laughs> then after she got her bearings a little bit, then the questions were coming. And then somehow I found that these discourses they were so poignant, so powerful. And these uh, bhaktas, you know, so quickly assimilated the conversation and fell into complete emptiness. You see, and in that moment there were jnanis. It rarely happens the other way round. They were so silent and so receptive and open, and you could see that uh, they could respond. Something respond, you know, to the pointing from this. You know, who is watching this, Amma? What, what sees this? And it says, "There's only silence and space here. There's nothing here. There's no other here." And full of light and joy, you know. So I'm inclined to remind uh, the people who come that we sit together, we have this chance together, to be all inclusive in your attitude, in your heart, and don't condemn any group, because all are expressions of the one whole. So like this, anywhere you go, you will find friends. Everywhere you go, is the sang is the sangha is there, satsang is there. Because there's no division in your heart. Because when you have met others who carry this division, this judgment, I tell you, it's a bad smell. You will not be free holding on to divisions inside yourself. So I always heartily encourage you: you lose nothing in being all-inclusive. In fact, you gain so much. So you can be in the company of the jnanis and the bhaktis, the yogis, the karma yogis, all of them. You can sit with them, the naga babas, any anywhere you go. Yeah, there will not be any separation in your eyes, and this is the beauty that sometimes you go to some place, and there are some beings that can see division in you, immediately because you wear everything is in your face. So you stay as that all-embracing wholeness. You lose nothing, huh? and all the beings can come and take shelter and shade in your presence. Thank you.